it's honestly ironic that I'm filming this video today because I'm 99% sure there was a question in here of being like, how do you manage your time? Or like, how do you manage your stress working and writing? That's a bold assumption that I am managing it in any way that is good right now because I swear if I just have one more person tell me that I have one more thing to do, one more task to add to do my to-do list, one more plan that I need to make. <sighs> I'm going to lose my mind. I'm going to lose my mind. Yeah, I'm working on my edits for Take My Hand right now. I finally got those back for my editor. So trying to do that and also be staying on track with Starting Line. We got a lot going on right now. If you're not my cat or my manuscript, I don't have time for you at the moment. So, so sorry. But anyways, let's go ahead and dive into these questions. So I was asked to do like an author kind of Q&A video. I've talked... So I, like I've already answered some questions in regards to like books and writing and stuff and my chat and get ready with me's but wanted to make a specifically dedicated video to just writing slash book questions. So that is what I have. I had asked on my community tab and my Instagram stories. So thank you to everyone who has submitted a question. I could start doing these like I could switch these off with chat chill and get ready with me's every other month like kind of doing one or the other. So if you guys have more questions, I'm going to answer every single one. I don't know how long this video is going to be, but I will answer every single one that I got today. But if you have any more, you can leave them down in the comments. And if this is something that we want on like a reoccurrence, I'll do it. But I just don't want to make like repeat content for you guys. So these are in no particular order. I just jotted them down from when I got them in. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump in. So I have, what tropes are you interested in writing? Well, I don't specifically like when I'm thinking of like a book, I don't think like, oh, I want to write this trope. And then like I build a story out around it. It's more like I get that normally it's like a scene. I see a scene in my head and then I'm like, okay. And then the characters start coming to me and then it's like, okay, we flush it out. But I don't go in, I, at least so far in any of the books, even like looking ahead, like the next like four books that I've planned, not a single one of them have been trope based, but it's more like I start writing or I start forming the idea and then it's like what tropes do they fall into. So like with Take You Down, I didn't set out to write Grumpy Sunshine. It was more just Scar was like guarded and kind of grumpy and Walker was happy and sunshiny that it just kind of worked. And like the forced proximity with them being on the tour bus. When I thought that I was like, oh, this is for like, I didn't think like, oh, this is forced proximity. It just kind of like fell into that. Same with like Hayden and Carter. It just happened to be like friends to love because I would have like never been like I'm gonna write a friends to lovers book it just happened so I would say like I don't really see that changing for me however I would love to write a student teacher book one day I think you guys want that from me actually you've told me that you want that and I think people expect that that one day I will write that and I will say I would love to write a student teacher book one day Y'all know, I feel like I am a student teacher connoisseur, you know? However, I don't have that story right now. And also I don't think I could deal with the pressure at them at this moment of giving you guys one because your expectations would be so high because I've read so many and you guys know that that's like my favorite trope. So uh, one day I would love to write that. I'd also love, it's not necessarily a trope, but I would love to one that, write one that doesn't have an HEA. I would really love to do that. I would really love to rip some hearts out. What tools slash methods do you use to plan out your books and series such as mind maps, etc.? So for taking, so I guess I, I'll use like a series as an example and then I'll use starting line as an example. So, and starting line is my summer book that I'm releasing in case if you're like, what's that? I haven't talked a lot about it, but that's like a standalone. So I'll kind of use that one for the example, but for the series, for the Whisper Me Nothing series. So for that one, I have, first of all, I have a lot of, I used to have like a lot of random like note cards and post-it notes everywhere with stuff. And I used to have like a murder map on my wall here above my desk where I sit to write. And I had like every single thing that was like Walker and Scar, like kind of key timelines, key things with their characters, kind of keeping the flow of that story going. I had them all in a line and like green post-it notes. And then Hayden and Carter, cause they were book two, I had all theirs in like orange and then Nikolai and so-and-so I had in yellow and then read and so and so I had in blue and I kind of had that like mind mapped out I've taken that down because I just haven't like needed it and instead now so for this now to plan out the books I have a whisper me nothing's info sheet where I have key dates I have every single character I have their height eye color, hair color, tattoos, what have you. I have their family members. I have their parents' names. I have their birthdays. I have key events of like, take you down, take my hand, uh, take what you want is gonna be like a year time jump. I think I'm still kind of messing around with that. I think it's gonna be about a year time jump. And then take me home. Not me casually just dropping the fourth title when I literally wasn't planning on that, but 
Oh, well. It's going to be a little bit even more, but I kind of have that now on just like a, it's just a Word doc that I have that. And that is very helpful for me in terms of planning because I have all those key events written down and in order. Uh, so I love doing that. So that really helps to plan out for that. Uh, but for like starting line for a standalone, I just, I don't really have anything that I've needed to plan out for that. I will say I do have a calendar for starting line because it is, it's a sports romance. I haven't announced this, but like I have posted a little graphic, I think in my story and it had the Olympic rings in it. So yes, it's, and it's releasing with the summer Olympics. That's why I'm like pushing to get it done. Uh, it's an Olympic athlete romance. And so I do have an Olympic calendar that I created because that book starts, ignore my dirty screen. Don't, I'm one comment away from going over the edge. Do not comment on my dirty screen right now, okay? I don't have the time to keep it the cleanest, but I have in Canva, in Canva, I have like my own writing calendar to keep track. So as you can see, like when I write and stuff, but up here then I have, so the book starts in February. So I just put like, this is, okay, let's say this is my start date. Well, this is like their interview. And then the winter cup, cause it's like with, TJ leading up to the Olympics, she has a lot of competitions that she needs to be keep that I need to be keep keeping track of and leading up to the Olympics. So I have then like the key dates and events all built out here into a Canva calendar for me to keep track of when I'm writing and then like the actual Olympics, the trials, all of that. So that has been super helpful for me. And I think it's going to especially help with timelines. And honestly, I might start doing this for more books because that is something that I always have to do more work of and edits is making sure that my timelines match up and it would just be so much easier if I just kind of had the calendar from the start. So I might start incorporating that more going forward. How do you come up with ideas for your characters slash their arcs? So honestly, I just sit with that. Like, especially with the main characters, I just sit with them. Like, I mean, Walker and Scar were in my head for years and years. So I didn't have to like, I, I've never had to like force something of being like, I, I just need something. So let me toss this into the mix just because I need to. But truly it is just like, I sit with them in my head a lot. I listen to the playlists that I make for the characters or for the story. And I listen to those like while I'm showering and that's just like, I can't have my phone in there. So that's just uninterrupted time of me just getting a daydream. And I just like, I daydream a lot, okay? I just spend a lot of time like off in my own land. And that's time of me just kind of like sitting with the characters and letting them kind of talk to me. Uh, the me, Listening to the playlist though is huge. I can hear like a song and I just kind of like see a scene and then I add it and then like that can kind of like snowball into more and being like, oh, that can connect here, whatever. So the characters, honestly though, they come to me like pretty fully formed, like all of the main characters have. I don't really do much in terms of like, like I know some people have like uh like interview with a character and you like do that and fill that out. Like I've never needed to do that with any of them because they do just, they feel like very real people kind of come to me with their stories, what they want, what their journey is going to be. I don't know, they all kind of come to me with that. And there are certain characters that have more of an arc. Like I would say in my head, like take you down, Scar had more of an arc than Walker did in terms of like her personal growth. And that was something for a while I was like, I feel like Walker needs something. But then I realized like, he's just a pretty fully formed part. Like he's at a pretty good place in his life. And it was more like the external of the band drama that was like affecting him at that moment. He didn't really have any like personal struggles that he needed to work through. So then he kind of was more of like an anchor for Scar's arc where Take My Hand, they both have individual arcs together, but they both have like individual journeys that they kind of need to go on. And that, again, that just kind of came with them. Like, I don't know. And same with TJ and Caleb for starting line. They both just kind of showed up with their arcs. I genuinely, I don't have a good answer for this, except that like they just pop into my head and start talking. I know that's not helpful because like I don't have any way to like do that for you or give you tips on how to do that. But they genuinely do just show up one day and are just like, I'm putting up residence up here. <laughs> Where's my commission? You should have been better at negotiating up front. That's a you problem, just saying. Okay, author origin story, authors who inspired you the most, plotting versus no plotting. Okay, author origin story. Uh, I do remember back in elementary school, there was author, I don't remember what her name is, but the book was Writing the Flume. 
and it was like obviously like a kid's chapter book or something but we had the author come into my elementary school and we met in the pit that was literally what the big room was called it was called the pit and she showed us like the book like the book in multiple stages how she like submitted it and then how she got it back with like all these post-it notes and she marked that up and being like this is all the stuff that my editor wanted to change and whatever and it was kind of she was kind of being like if you want to be an author like it's a lot of work and I still remember being that and like being really undeterred and being like that's what I want to do I want to write and like period end of story and then over like middle school high school I didn't read as much I wasn't really writing as much and I kind of got other interests and then I just like didn't care about school in general and I was like fuck it I'm not gonna do anything <laughs> with my life like I didn't know and then when I went off to college I got a degree in communication I thought I was going to do events that's what I did I did large-scale event planning in college and I thought that that's what I was going to do when I graduated but then my senior year, I took a YA fiction class. And in that class, our final project was writing, our two big grades that we had in that class was writing 25,000 words of a young adult novel and then a revised 10,000 words for that. And those were our two big grades. And I loved that. Everyone in that class hated it. They were all like, this sucks, 25,000 words. And I remember being like, this is so fun. I've never had more fun in a class than I'm having right now. And I remember when that class was done, I was like, I'm gonna finish this book. I never did. That story is still in my head. I've kind of transformed it into like a, an adult romance book because I'm not writing YA. Um, but I, I will tell that book one day. I think that'll actually end up being a duet. And then once I got back into reading and then found the romance genre, I was like, this is what I'm going to do. I am going to write a romance book. And I that I guess is like, author origin so I I always say like I fell into booktube and bookstagram like I just started doing this over the pandemic because I was bored and <laughs> I still love it and I'm so happy that I started doing it and that I have this community but I have always intent intended on being an author before I ever intended on being like a like I don't want to use the word influencer I don't know a reviewer in the space or whatever I always wanted to be an author so whether people choose to believe that or not that's fine but I forever and always have wanted to be an author. Authors who inspired you the most? Um, I guess in terms of like romance, I think maybe because it was one of the first authors that I found was Penelope Douglas. They're still one of my absolute favorites. Anything that they write, I will read. And I think one thing that inspires me the most about their books is the burn between the characters. They are one author that have not succumbed to like the insta lust kind of craze. I feel like that's happened recently. Not that that's a bad thing because you know there are certain times that I do really like that but that burn between characters where it's like you are just like these two need to get together or I'm actually going to lose my mind and just like that tension and all of the characters just feel very well rounded like they feel like real people and I just only hope that like one day I can write even a semblance of that in my own stories. And then plotting versus no plotting, I am a big plotter. I think I have some more questions about like how I plot, so I'm, right? Yeah, you know what, I actually have another plotting question, so I'm gonna get more into that in a little bit. So I will just say for this one, I am a big plotter. How do you form a story from an idea? Once again, I don't have like any tips or tricks. It's just, this is what happens for me. I sit on it. I just sit on it for a while. So for example, Take You Down all started with the scene of Scar doing the sound check and Walker seeing her. I saw, I saw that scene in my head. And from there, the entire book spiraled out from that and the entire plot kind of like spitted itself out at me. But I had that idea back in like 2018. So it sat with me for years. So it took a while where, and granted, I wasn't like actively trying to plot it, where with Hayden and Carter, I saw some specific scenes with them. But again, that one, I was like, I'm gonna be under a little bit more of a time crunch to get this one. Like, I don't have another like four years to sit with this story. You know, now my first one's out. I'm not gonna wait four years in between publishing. So that one, I had to actively try to plot more. And I would say I plotted that entire book in about a week or two. So one thing that I did a lot, I love taking my parents' dog on walks around their neighborhood. Luckily I was dog sitting for them at the time when I was plotting this book. And that was so helpful for me because I just took her on these long walks. They live in like a developing neighborhood. So it's quiet. There's like not a lot of traffic, just very serene walking around back there. I would just listen to Hayden and Carter's playlist that I made. And I truly just, I just, 
sat with them and I was just like what do you want to tell me today and I know that sounds like bizarre but that's truly just how it is and I just kind of let them talk and tell me what they want to do and then like I'll be on the walk and I'll like be voice memoing into my phone or like I'll pull out my notes app and like quick jot something down and then when I get back then I sit down on my google doc and I start like uh arranging it in uh but yeah again just like a lot of daydreaming and like I said listening to the music is huge those playlists are huge for me in terms of like just getting inspiration and sitting there and kind of sitting with the story but all of my stories have formed from a single scene like take you down has uh take my hand I saw the scene that you actually see in take you down uh between Carter and her ex-boyfriend uh go down and I saw like Hayden running in there um and I saw some other scenes but I don't want to like say those now because obviously I want you guys to just retake my hand and see them for yourself can't wait to talk about some of the scenes because there's one I think it's maybe around like the 50 percent mark um I feel like you'll know when you see it um there's a lot of like aggression in it and then starting line as well I saw a scene that's like the la it's gonna be like the last probably like what it's probably gonna be at like the 80% mark. It's so deep into the book. But again, I just had that, I saw that scene like three years ago. And again, just have sat with it. And all of a sudden the story came together just like in the last month or two. So sometimes it can be really quick. Sometimes it can take some time. Do you use your laptop to write books or do you use an iPad? I don't have an iPad. I just use my laptop. I do have like a detachable keyboard that I use. So that way I can put my laptop up on a stand. So it can help with my posture a little bit. I have shit posture, but I do have, I do just write on my laptop. Will you ever write romantic suspense? I will say like never say never. I mean, there are certain tropes or things like that I really don't think I ever would or like subgenres. Like I really, really, really don't think I'm ever going to write you guys a secret baby book. I really don't. If we do, it will shock us both. Uh, in romantic suspense, I guess I just don't really like read any romantic suspense. So I don't foresee that. But again, like I said, it's, I don't more set out for tropes. It's kind of like the characters come to me and then the story does. And then I kind of see like what tropes fall into it. So I don't know. I mean, maybe one day. What does your writing schedule look like? So it differs pretty much every day, but obviously I still work my nine to five job. Well, it's, 7 30 to 4. So uh, during the week it's in the evenings normally like when I'm done with work I somehow rot for like 20 minutes uh and then I will like make dinner do like chores things that I need to do around here and then normally I'll sit down and write or try to the cats always then end up getting up from their naps and then like bother the hell out of me uh so trying to write while they're both like crawling on the desk but I'd say just like in the evenings probably by like six o'clock every night I'm trying to sit down and write and it just depends on how much I write every night I do not set a word count for myself and I do not set like any sort of goals I just try to write like a story beat or a chapter basically or just some days at the bare minimum even just add a single sentence a single sentence sometimes is all I get down for the day and you know what that's okay because at least it's progress uh, but then on the weekends, my I'm a morning person. So my mind is like sharpest in the morning and I feel like the most mo motivated in the morning. So on the weekends, I try to get up and like I just write normally until lunchtime. And that is my I, granted, I'm very lucky to be able to do that because like I don't have kids. I don't have like a partner. Uh, like I don't have outside people that like need me in those weekend mornings most of the time. So if I can, I'm writing in the weekend mornings. Uh, but then it just kind of like varies. If I feel like writing in the afternoon, fine. Or if I have something going on in the morning and I don't have plans in the evening, then I flip flop it. But if I can, I always like to write in the morning. Okay, so these two kind of go hand in hand. So I have, how do you outline your novel if you do? And then I have, what's your process for plotting? Do you go chapter by chapter by story beats, et cetera? Based, so for outlining, so yeah, I do. I don't go chapter by chapter because I don't ever know sometimes how long a chapter is going to be. Uh, and sometimes like then I'm like, oh, I maybe feel like switching up the POV while I'm still kind of trying to accomplish this one thing. So then I will not, so then I'll like split up and out a chapter. So I don't do by chapter numbers, but I do story beats. And normally I start them out of being like, so it, I'll use starting line right now. So a lot of times now I'll have like TJ, 
POV and then like whatever I whatever is the big thing and then underneath it I'll be like include here or like we need to talk about this or then this happens whatever and then it'll be like Caleb POV and then same process so it truly is just the story beats like that and then it depends sometimes like one of those sets of bullet points is only one chapter sometimes it can be like three chapters it just depends on how the writing is flowing so that's how I like doing that uh, and I am very, I'm a very big puzzle piecer. So I do that in writing too. I will write scenes and then I will stitch them together in the actual book. So like I don't, I, for the most part, I would say 90% of the book is written in linear order. And then I would say 10% is random scenes that I all of a sudden get in my head. And I'm like, I need to write this right now. That was especially in Take You Down. I had like maybe five key scenes written for that one before I started writing linear like in linear order uh this one I don't have as many but I do anticipate me doing that just because that's how kind of like my brain works it just kind of like jumps around but with the outline I kind of do the same thing so with starting line I very much so in this process I had like maybe three or four scenes in my head but I was aria <laughs> but i was not sure if i was going to be able to pull this story together because i had like four beads and i was like but i don't have like a string and i don't have other beads in order to like put it all together and then obviously dorian bro but then once i got that together anyways what i'm trying to say is when i'm also outlining I am just putting things kind of like where I think they might go, but I am like jumping things around as I'm outlining. If all of a sudden I'm like, I don't need this here. I actually need this up here. I do it and then I fill in the gaps. Or if I know like in the story, I'm like, I need this to happen. I need this to happen, but something's got to fall in the middle. I leave that blank. I leave like a blank box. So that way I know I need to fill something in, but then that's where my time with just sitting with it comes into play. I just sit with it. I think about what's going on before. I think about what's going on after. And I'm kind of like, hmm, what do you two want to do in the middle of that? <laughs> you know, uh, how not to get distracted while trying to write? That's an excellent question. I'll let you know when I know. I, I'm horrible at that. Uh, I do keep my phone in do not disturb mode a lot of the time when I'm writing. I pretty much turn it on every single time I write. I do have certain people that like can bypass it. So that way if there's like an emergency or something like people can get a hold of me. But I do keep my phone in do not disturb mode quite a bit of the time. And also I feel like my friends and family are kind of like I kind of say like I need you to not bother me. Like when I was finishing Take My Hand I took PTO actually to get that book finished up because it was like around Christmas and I was like I had PTO to burn anyways. So I took it and I let my family know and I was like do not ask me to do anything I'm like I will be there on Christmas Eve I will be there on Christmas Day do not ask me to do anything these other days because I'm gonna feel obligated and I do not have time for that right now and I even told my friends I'm like I am trying to get this book done I'm not going to be answering my phone a lot just be aware of that and for the most part everyone's like good about that which is nice but I mean I I don't know I'll literally be sitting there and I'll write like two whole pages and I'll be like this is flowing yeah and then I pick up my phone and I'm like, why are you doing that? Why? I don't know. So yeah, I don't know. I do get distracted quite a bit, but I think there are certain times though, when I know that I'm like under deadline that I need to sit down and buckle down and get it done. And I'm good about that. Like I am. It's the times then when I'm not as much like crunched that then I'm like, oh, what's like another 10 minutes if I sit on TikTok? I need to delete TikTok from my phone. Actually, that's what I need to fucking do. Uh, what's the process like? I don't know what this is like. Are you writing process, idea forming process, writing process, publishing process, marketing process? I don't know. I feel like I'm answering some other process questions. So I guess if this was yours, let me, if you're watching this, then like comment below, I guess more specifically what you're looking for. I obviously, I have my take you down writing vlog where I kind of take you in the process from start to finish. So I'll link that down below. I'll like I'll link it in the description box and I'm doing another one for take my hands. So I'll have that one up on release day as well. But uh, I guess if you have like specific process questions, but I don't know, cause I could probably make an entire hour long video on just that single question trying to like cover all the bases so let me know specifically for next time being an author now changed how slash what books you read a little bit so when I was writing take it down and take my hand I was not reading any rock star romances I just didn't really want to be not that I was worried about like being so influenced by it but I think because I was spending all of my time in like a rock star headspace I just didn't really want to read it and yeah there was also points where I'm like I don't want it to ever get like convoluted in my own head so I wasn't really reading that trope for a while 
Uh, so I guess like that changed, but otherwise, I mean, obviously I don't do, I dropped both my book clubs, but like even read alongs, like I've pulled out of all of those, like I don't do those anymore because I've never want, I now I never want to get into a situation where like, A, I don't like a book and then I'm not going to get on a live show and shit on another author's book. And I'm also not going to get on a live show and lie about liking a book that I didn't actually like or I don't want to get on a live show where I really enjoyed the book, but then everyone in the comments hates it. And then it's just like, we're just talking about things that we don't like about it. Like, I just, I never want to get myself in a situation like that. So now I stopped doing that. So now all I do is mood read, which is great for me. I love that. But I would say that definitely has changed that I don't have those like obligations anymore, those obligated readings. Uh, and also I DNF a lot more now than I used to because I don't talk about books on my channel that I didn't like and that I wouldn't recommend because once again, I'm not going to get on here and pretend to like a book that I didn't like. And I'm also not going to get on here and shit on someone else's book. So I used to really enjoy rage reading. I used to always want to finish every book that I talked about on here so I could give you my full and honest opinion from the entire book. But now that I can't do that, I just, I DNF them if I don't like them. And that has honestly been great for me. Is there anything you would do differently for your second book? So... I'd say the biggest thing that I did differently this time around in terms of like the process was my uh, editing process for the, uh, Take My Hand has been a lot different than it was for Take You Down. So for Take You Down, I finished and then I printed it off a hard copy of my manuscript and then I went through and I marked it all up and I was marking like pr like little things of being like missed commas punctuation, spelling. I was literally marking that up. I was doing like line edits on there and I was doing like developmental character edits. I was trying to do all of that in one fall swoop. And that was so time consuming. That was painstaking. That was stupid of me to do that, honestly. And I realized how long that took me. So then, and then even like on editing, then I was trying to do all of those edits all in one go, like all in one foul swoop. And it was like, that was just bad. So this time with Take My Hand, I sent my Word doc to my Kindle and then I just read through it. And it, I was only, I was like, I'm not looking, I'm not doing any wording. I'm not doing any grammar stuff. I'm not doing any of that. I am strictly doing like character arcs, pacing, things that are missing from this book, big general things. And that's what I did. I just marked it in my notes app on my phone. I was like, chapter 18 needs this here. Chapter 25 needs this here. That's all I did. And that was also then when I had my readers doing it and giving me feedback as well. So then I went through and did all the big stuff in one edit. And then the next time through, then I did more of like the line stuff, the wording, switching things around, phrasing things a bit better, adding like, like beefing up a dialogue here, whatever, that kind of thing. And then now it's off to my editor. We've done two rounds of copy editing. Now we're doing proofreading. And I think this editing process has been so much better. And every time that I've edited it myself before I've sent it to my editor, I have sent it to my Kindle because I think you're eye catches on things differently on a Kindle than it does on a Word doc. Like just the way that it reads differently. So I've really liked that, that I've done that as well and sent it to my Kindle. So that second time I did it when I was doing more of like those little minute things, I had my Kindle just like sitting here with my laptop and would like go, I'd be like, oh, I need to fix that, fix it on my laptop and go back and forth. And I loved that editing process way more. And I think I will be doing that moving forward. Any advice for those struggling to write? Also, do you use any fancy programs? Okay, fancy programs? No, I use uh, Google Docs to write. I do use Microsoft Word to edit because my editor likes that better. So I do move it into Microsoft Word when I need to send it to her. I don't obviously do anything for cover design because I hire someone to do my cover. So I don't have any programs for that. I use Canva for like making marketing stuff. Uh, and then for formatting, I do use Vellum. That's my fanciest program. That's the most expensive one. That was like $250, but it's a one-time fee. Now I just have the program and I can format all of my books in perpetuity. Like I just have that program and I can just do it. So I'm very happy that I did that. Then I don't have to hire anyone out to format. It makes it so easy. It literally does like everything for you. It's the easiest program ever. I know you can format without it, but I watched like tutorials of that and I was like, this looks like hell. No, thank you. So that's my fanciest program that I use. And then for any advice for those struggling to write, so I guess for those people who already have a story, but they're more like struggling with sitting down every day or like finding motivation to do it every day, don't set yourself a word count go goal. I know some people are gonna be like, ah, oh, like live, breathe, die by their word count. I don't. 
I, on my little Canva calendar, I just simply have every single day, write. If I write 2000 words, amazing. If I write a paragraph, at least it's progress. If I write 5000 words, awesome. There are certain times, there are certain crunch times where it's like, I know I need to write more and I will push myself. But especially like during the week sometimes, or if I'm in, like if I have, you know, all day meetings at work and then like work dinners afterwards, and then I don't get home until like eight o'clock at night, I'm not going to be like, oh no, I got to write my 2000 words. No. If I even write a sentence, good for me because it's just a little bit of progress. So every, just try every single day to do something, to contribute something to that story. Or if you're struggling with like coming up with an idea, do something like make one little thing, one little note for it every single day. Even if it's just a character's appearance, a character name, a, a trip that they want to, a, a trip that you want to do in the book or like a little plot point here or what they do for work or whatever it be just one thing every single day. Cause that will get the ball rolling and it'll, you'll get in a routine with it. That would be the biggest thing I'd say though, for anyone struggling to come up with ideas, that's a whole different thing. And like I said, I, I am like not helpful with that whatsoever because truly I, the characters just come and I just have to sit with them and then they give me the ideas for the story. Like, or like I see the scenes play out. So I don't have like things to jumpstart that. Cause truly it is just like, Hey, how y'all doing? That kind of thing. And just writing what they tell me. Curious about how you had to Kindle Unlimited. So again, I talk about this in the Take You Down vlog, maybe like a little bit more in depth, but I want to say, so I think you just go to KDP, that's Kindle Direct Publishing or like Google that and go to their website and you create an account. And then it's literally so easy. It has like create a book and you just like upload it. It's so, so, so simple. So the cover formatting though was annoying to me that first time around because I didn't know that your cover has to like be formatted with your specific, whatever, it was a whole thing. Adding to Kindle Unlimited is actually super easy. Just go to Kindle Direct Publishing website and get yourself an account and you're good to go. Curious about what you use to write your book, like what software slash app, like I said, Google Docs for writing, Microsoft Word for editing. Curious about pricing books for Kindle and how much you earn from Kindle for your books. So pricing books for Kindle, you get to choose like, the granted I can only speak on through Kindle Direct Publishing, you get to choose how much you charge for eBooks and how much you charge for paperbacks. You don't set how much you charge like per Kindle Unlimited page read. They just like Kindle has just already decided that. And I don't even know what the exact amount is. It's literally like fractions of pennies, I think per page read. It's very, very small. However, it does add up. I looked at my stats. Uh, I actually pulled it up for this video because of this question. So I, I'm just looking at last year. So for October to December, because I published October 16th. So I have October 16th through December 31st. So all of my total royalties that I made last year, my second highest earning out of eBooks, print and Kindle Unlimited page reads was Kindle Unlimited page reads. Print royalties obviously is the most because that's the highest price. That's what you make the most money off of. But I made the second most money off of Kindle Unlimited page reads because that's like that, 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 those fractions of pennies add up with the pages that get clicked through. So I wouldn't underestimate that, but it is so, so, so low. Like it is very, very low per like actual page, but I made like a decent chunk of royalties just from that. Like, honestly, what it's almost half, I made almost half of my print royalties. So yeah. And then as for pricing, so you could, I could literally go on there and price take you down for $50 for print. So like if that, I could even price the ebook for 50 bucks. I think if that's what I want to do, I think you can charge what Whatever. How like obviously I'm not gonna do that because that would be stupid. But so like the ebook, I just know that like most ebooks cost $4.99. I price mine at $4.99. Same with paperbacks. So they do have a minimum that you have to charge depending on how long your book is because of like how much it costs to actually print it. So you do have a minimum of what you need to charge just in order for for them to cover the print cost of it. And then you get, you know, like extra and then you get like additional off of that for how much extra you charge on top of that fee so i just looked again i think i just looked at like what i tip what books that are in my page length range and like from authors i've read of how much they typically charge and that's how much i priced then take you down it. do you edit your own work so yes but also no i do have an editor um so i self edit you know for like two rounds of kind of like i do my own kind of de developmental editing along with some of my friends right now so on take my hand i had three of them starting line 
I'm going to have four people reading and helping out with the developmental editing of it. And I am just very grateful that my friends are willing to do that for me. Uh, and then I do have my best friend, Katie, she writes, we have been friends since we were little. We've always like been the two creative friends and all of Whisper Me Nothing, that entire series, like I workshopped with her and same with Starting Line. I had a call with her because she used to live out in LA. She actually literally just moved home like yesterday, right? So excited to have her home. I workshop starting line with her. We had like a two hour call and I gave her all of the things I had for starting line and her and I kind of talked through it and we kind of like formed it out into a fully formed story. So that kind of like, I guess that she's kind of like developmental editing me with that. Same with then the people that I have reading it. They kind of tell me like, oh, I maybe need a little bit more here or like, did you kind of like mean this? Like, uh, and take my hand. One of Cheyenne was like, Mm, are you I don't think these two are going to be together but I'm getting more vibes of them than like these other two and I'm like well shit like I did not notice that so then I was like I need to fix that but anyway so that kind of stuff I have friends helping me for but then um like copy editing and proofreading yes I do work with an actual editor from that I work with Z Zeneb uh from the blue couch edits she edited take you she proofread take you down and she's copy editing and proofreading take my hand uh yeah I do think having an editor is huge but it's also very expensive rightfully so like they deserve to be compensated for their work but I will say editing is the most expensive part of this process so it is like if you're looking at like expense like yeah it's you do need to allocate quite a bit um into editing you balance time with writing and reading and work Th this is the question I think that at the beginning I was like I don't know I don't I don't know there are certainly seasons where I feel like I do better with this like honestly for the month of January I was doing great because I was rocking and rolling on my take my hand edits but I wasn't writing starting line at the same time also the holidays had just passed so like that was good I was like feeling good the month of January and then even like into this month when I turned take my hand in my editor and I was just writing starting line I was like once again I'm doing good but right now as I'm editing take my hand trying to stay on track with starting line working nine to five having YouTube and then trying to just like live a life outside of all of that. I'm not doing great at that. I wish I had better tips. Um, I will say with like my regular day job that I work, when I am done, I am done. I shut that down and I immediately switch over into like my my more like fun work mode like my my like passion project works you know I immediately jump into that so I guess I'm really good about turning off like the other work in order to switch over to my work but I mean I I don't know I don't really have a great balance right now that's something that I definitely need to learn how to do how do you deal with imposter syndrome writing while writing um <laughs> I think especially for taking my hand it was helpful because I did not read any reviews I specifically needed to do that for myself so when I released take you down I was obviously very anxious about that release and just the I don't just in general like it's just a scary thing to do and then when I started writing take my hand I didn't want to look at any reviews because I didn't want to get in my head of people being like what does she think she's doing you know that kind of thing so I didn't look up any reviews and that was good for me because I feel like I didn't really get any sort of imposter syndrome while I was writing take my hand and then afterwards I looked up reviews and whatever and yeah but I would say like that was big for me just like not listening to what people were saying because obviously everyone is entitled to their own opinions and like I'm not taking that away from anyone it's more just I knew for my sanity I couldn't see that so early on in the process and even like with take my hand I'm sure I'm gonna go through that again of being like oh I can't look at that I just remind myself that I'm like at least I'm doing it you know at least I'm actually doing it you know there are so many people who say like I want to write a book or I'm going to write a book or like I have this story in my head and then like just never do it and I just remind myself like at least you're doing it at least you've done it you've done it again and now you're doing it for a third time and I don't know I just try to remind myself to be like proud of that that I've already made it farther than like other people have uh but then like when I think about like my favorite authors or I see them then I'm like well f I'm never gonna like reach that you know and that's okay I think honestly though the biggest thing for me is that I just kind of keep my head down I I feel like I've done I've especially started doing that with like YouTube over like the last year I just started kind of like keeping my head down doing my own thing minding my own business and that's just kind of what I'm doing with writing as well I'm just kind of 
I'm writing my books. I'm staying in my lane. I don't really care about what anyone else is doing, what anyone else is saying, what anyone else's opinion is on it. And that's like a good place for me to be in. So I would say that definitely helps with imposter syndrome because then I'm not like paying attention to what people are saying, what people are doing, what people's opinions are. Cause like, I'm just kind of in my own little bubble a little bit. I mean, yeah, that does get lonely, but I feel like that's a better trade off to not feeling like what am I doing here all the time? But how can we get the Take You Down Special Edition? So in case if you weren't aware, there is a special edition dark and quirky book box. It's in their winter box, I think. Uh, it's one of four books in that. Unfortunately, that was just a subscriber box. Like it was their first box of the year. So it was their first box for subscribers. So unless if you were a subscriber, you weren't able to get the box. Honest, I'm going to be completely honest. I'm sure a lot of people will be reselling theirs because so many people are probably like, who's this bitch? So I'm sure you will be able to find some secondhand and I doubt they'll sell them for very much because like I said who the fuck am I but anyways that doesn't take away from the fact that I'm very excited to have a special edition of Take You Down so the cover hasn't been like broadly released or anything but if you go to the dark and quirky website under the spoiler section you can see the cover it's so pretty I love it I'm so excited about it and I'm in the box with fucking Lucia Franco are you joking me are you joking me um so yeah unfortunately you had to be a subscriber i i think i'm gonna be getting some extras though so i will definitely do giveaways with them once i have some do you use an outline can you talk a bit about how you decide story structure so i think i've already kind of answered this right yes i use an outline and story structure like i said i kind of patchwork it's more like i see the scenes and then i kind of like thread them together that makes sense Probably not. I don't know if that makes sense to literally anyone but my brain. So sorry, not very. I never claim to be helpful. I'm just trying to tell you what you know, what I know. Um, how do you pick your character names? I always feel like that's the hardest part. And then I also got how do you come up with your character names? So once again, I feel like I'm about to be entirely unhelpful. I have never once picked a main character's name. They have all come to me with their names. Most of them come with their full names. Some of them don't come with last names. So I'll kind of talk about that. So Obviously with Walker, I knew that his name was going to be Walker, but that was like his last name that he went by. And he was just like, it's it's James, like I'm James Walker. And I was like, sick, thank you. Uh, so I will say with all eight Whispering Me Nothings characters, not a single one of them I've had to come up with their name. However, Carter did not come to me with a last name. She just never really told me that she had one. So when that was the case, then I use that for like a fun little Easter egg for myself for some of my favorite movie or like TV show characters. So her name is Carter O'Connor. You've heard the last name O'Connor, like Brian O'Connor from the Fast and Furious series. That is Paul Walker's character in that. And I thought that was like kind of fun to like do a little Easter egg for that. Uh, Reed, his la he once again didn't have a last name. So then I was like, hmm, what do I want to do? And then Sutter Keeley from The Spectacular Now, one of my all-time favorite books, all-time favorite movies, all-time favorite fictional characters. I was like, I'm going to give him the last name Keeley in honor of him, kind of like a little bit of an Easter egg. Uh, so yeah, and also with this, it's kind of, it's, it's a blessing and a curse that these characters come with their names intact because one, I don't ever have to name them, but two, I don't get say in their names. So for example, with Starting Line, I have always referred to her as TJ because... Here's the thing. Years ago, when I first got this scene in my head and these two, and Ca Caleb came to me and TJ came to me, they both came to me with their names intact. TJ's name is Tuesday. Hear me out. I, I don't pick it. I don't pick it. She showed up and she said, my name's Tuesday. And I said, what the fuck? And I tried. I texted my friends of being like, guys, I need you to be honest with me. How much do you hate this name? And pretty much everyone was like, yeah, I don't like it. And I tried to change it. I made the entire outline with a different name. It was still a T name. It sounded kind of similar, but it wasn't Tuesday. And I made the entire outline that with that. And I was like, I'm not like, she. You, I'm like, you cannot be Tuesday. <sighs> And every single time I read something in that outline, I did not read the name that I had written down there that was different. I read Tuesday. Every single time I saw it, I was like, that's wrong. That's just, it's simply not her name. Instead, then I kind of made the, I kind of made the deal with her. I'm like, okay, you can have that name, but you hate that name. So that way it's kind of like a little bit better. And then also I'm like, you're going to go by TJ. She has a J middle name. And I'm like, you're going to be TJ for most of the book. Like Caleb probably calls her Tuesday more than anything. Well, he calls her Monday, but anyway, he's like, I... I cannot change it. So trust me then when they come with a bad name like that, I have no say. So that kind of sucks. And I know that sounds weird and you're like, you're, you are the wrong one writing it. You can simply change it. I promise you I can't. I really tried.
it just doesn't work like that. So it's a blessing and a curse. And same with all the side characters. Like for the most part, they pretty much all just like, yeah, that's your name. Like Boone, Naomi, Arun, all of those like wh Whispering Me Nothing side characters that like have a little bit more of a play in them. They kind of all came. A lot of the family members' names, they all just kind of came with them. Um, It's more like the random like one-off people who's like a bartender or an interviewer or something like that that then I have trouble thinking about. But then again, I kind of use that as like Easter eggs for some of my friends. So like my best friend Allie. So and take you down the interviewer, the podcast interviewer that Scar sits down with. Her name is Allison. So I used her name. I just spelled it differently. In starting line, actually, I don't think Katie knows this, but she is her Kate is a character in that, a side character in that. Uh, so I try to use that to like do little Easter eggs for my friends for like just those really side characters that it's like they don't come to me like fully formed. Last two. Oh, and these are I think I've literally always already done both of these. So I'd love to hear about your outlining slash planning process and how you set your deadlines and are you a plotter or a pantser? So I think I've already answered most of these. So once again, plotter. I've already talked about outlining and planning process. Deadlines though, let's talk about that. So, and let me, my computer's literally about to die. Let's set that off to the side. So deadlines, I am really big on my deadlines. Ask any of my friends. I am very much a deadline person. I'm very strict on them. So with Take You Down, that those deadlines were really, really fluid because no one knew about this release. Kind of, it was up to myself to kind of make my deadlines. So I think I started actually sitting down to write that one in like March or April of last year. And I didn't really know how long I, it would an, I would anticipate it taking. So I didn't really set a deadline of when I wanted to be done. I just was kind of like, I just want to release this by the end of the year. So, and I really don't want to release in December or November because of the holidays and then like my birthday. So I was like, I'm kind of thinking October. So I always kind of that had that in the back of my head. But then once I got started writing, I realized I'm like, okay, I want to have a draft done by August 1st. I didn't meet that deadline. I was like a week late, but whatever. I still ended up getting it done. And then from there, once I had that done, then I think that's when I set my release date. I'll take my hand and starting line, I feel like their deadlines are kind of, were kind of entangled with each other because with starting line, it's a summer Olympic romance. So I knew I wanted to release it along with the summer Olympics, which is the end of July and the beginning of August. So with that in mind, I knew that take my hand, which I knew I wanted to write next, I needed to be done with that book and have that released by like March or April. So I immediately started plotting and outlining, take my hand literally like the next day, it was like October 17th, I was like, okay, you're into this mode now, you're with Hayden and Carter now, you two get to the forefront of my mind. And I started working on that. And then I knew that I wanted to have my first draft done by December 31st. So then I had all of January to self edit. And then I got booked in with my editor really quickly, actually. So I had a January 25th deadline to turn it into her. So that's then why I was really strict with myself of finishing by December 31st, because then that gave me like three and a half weeks to self edit as much as I could before I turned it over to her. I think once I got locked in with Z for the 25th was then when I announced my March release date. Uh, for two months later on uh, March 25th and again I don't really think there was any rhyme or reason to me choosing that release I do like release on Mondays just because I, like my week starts on Monday and I just like like doing that on Monday yeah I don't really know I don't really remember why I chose that one but like I said I was really strict with my deadlines and I actually was earlier on my deadline I think I finished shake my hand like three or four days before my deadline. So that was really good. Uh, and then with starting line now, so my deadlines for that one, so I'm writing this one currently. My deadline for myself is to be done with my first draft by May 1st. I'm hoping to self edit for most of May, hopefully get booked in with my editor for the end of May slash the beginning of June, edit for June, and then it's releasing July 29th. So now at this point, I kind of know how long I need, at least for like the editing process, like the self edit process mostly. And then now I kind of know for like having an editor, like how long I need for that process. It's the writing process that now is like a little bit more different because Take You Down took me like six months almost to write that first draft where Take My Hand took me two. And starting line, I'm really hoping is gonna take me like two and a half because that's kind of what I have left to do. Even though it's gonna be a lot longer, this one's gonna be a thicker book, I think. Yeah, I, I love having deadlines for myself. I love sticking with deadlines. I get very motivated with them. So I find it really helpful to have them. Um, but yeah, that's kind of how I set them, I guess. That was probably...
probably the longest fucking answer ever. And you guys are probably like, stop talking. Stop talking. This has been a long video. I don't even know how many times I have pressed stop. And like, they've all been like 10 minutes. So this is going to be a doozy. But anyways, if you are still with me at the end here, thank you. Uh, like I said, if you have any more writing questions, feel free to leave them down below. Or if you guys want to see more of these videos, I'm cool with doing them every now and then, like subbing them in for like chat chill and get ready with me's or whatever. Every once in a while, I just don't want to like, I just want you guys to actually want them. You know, that is it for today's video and next week I'm going to have hockey romance recommendations I was thinking I was only gonna have one video but I think actually I realized I'm like I think I'm gonna do hockey recs because I have tons that I've done recently I know people want like brothers I got like brother's best friend uh mafia what else step sibling was that I thought I had one other that those are all ones that people have requested lately and I just don't have enough for them right now I have not read enough new books for those so I was like I don't know what I'm gonna do and then I'm like you know what I have read a lot of recently hockey so you're getting hockey recs next week and then also my TBR my mark oh my god it's already March and take my hands almost out <gasps> exciting so anyways that is it for today's video and I will see you when I see ya